I've got a special treat for you today. I tell you what, we're at the Washington Sportsman Show here in Puyallup, and Edmont Iman, who you may remember from an earlier show that I did on Fish Camp, has arranged for us to be right here at the big warm water tank that's full of hungry bass and crappie and bluegill, and he's going to do a little private demonstration on his fishing technique jigging for walleye. And Ed, thank you so much for setting this up for us. Well, it's our pleasure, right? Dave. We, we really appreciate you taking the time to come in here and, and do this with us. And uh, we'll see if we can't uh, pass along a few tips or techniques that might help somebody down the line catch a walleye. That's great. And now when we come back here in a second, we're going to show, Ed's going to show three different jigs that he has found to be very effective over his years and years of guiding and fishing. And I'll even get some pulses to those so you know what to buy when you're at your local sporting goods store. We'll be right back. Well, Ed's got uh, some of his weaponry out here for you, and he's going to give you a good description of not only the lures, but rods and reels and lines. Well, what we've got here, first of all, you kind of well, there's no kind of to it. You will have a lot better success if you use the right equipment all the way down to the night crawler. So what we're using here is a Lama Glass 681 spinning rod set up with a U.S. reel filled with Izor 10-pound braid. And we're going to run that up here. We're going to run it down to this little jig. Now, this is more of a classic style jig, except that you'll notice that this jig has the eye in the front of the lead head instead of on top of it. So this will also vertical jig, but it'll also work very good in a hopping technique that we'll talk about a little later. Now, because of the tank here in these fish, we have these hooks bent down. I would probably put a night crawler on here. And there's no probably to it. I would have a night crawler on here. And that's very important in the whole process. Now this next little jig, And again, we're using the same rod, just a little lighter and smaller reel. And again, the same thing, we're back to the eight pound Izor line. Now on this one here, we brought it down and we put it into a little barrel swivel. And I'm going to run a little section of about 12 pound fluorocarbon into a snap swivel. Now when I use snap swivels on these jigs and stuff, I want the one that's round down here on the, on the snap end, not the one that's a 45 degree angle. This is a Blakemore rock hopper jig. It's got a little a tractor blade on the bottom. We put a, a plastic worm on here just for demonstration purposes. Again, if we were going to fish this in real life, I would probably be using a night crawler on here. Now this last animal here is my favorite technique for for fishing for walleye. Again, we're using a lama grass rod. This is a this is a 704J competitor hooked up to a U.S. reel uh, Hibden style rod. We've got the 10 pound braid coming down here. We're going to run into the same type of barrel swivel, and we're going to run this down a fluorocarbon again to that that uh, round snap swivel. And this little lure is nothing new. This little lure has been around since probably the early 50s. It first came out as a head and sonar. And then the guys developed a way, this was a cast and retrieve lure for bass. And then guys developed a, a jigging technique. Now this lure alone has won more money in the Northwest walleye fishing tournaments than all other techniques combined. It takes a little practice to get to use this, but it's deadly. The biggest fish I ever caught, I caught on this lure right here. And how big was that, Ed? <laughs> it was 12 and a half kilos. Oh my goodness. That's that's a big fish. <laughs> yes, and we released it. And nice. we have it on video. Terrific. Terrific. Well, we're going to take another quick little break. I'm going to do some uh, still shots of those lures so people can get a closer look at them. And then Ed's going to get up on the ladder, assume the position at the top of the tank here, and 
give a live demonstration and we'll see if these fish will react to these lures. This is Dave Graybill, the fishing magician, and when I fish the Upper Columbia and the Mad Howe Rivers for steelhead, I stay at the Lake Pateras Inn. I can tie my boat right up out front and be minutes from the action. The famous Miller Hole on the Mad Howe is less than two miles away. The rooms are comfortable and surprisingly affordable, and I'll be making the Lake Pateras Inn my base camp. To learn how to book your room at the Lake Pateras Inn, log on to lakepaterasmotorinn.com or call 866-444-1985. The goal of Battery Systems is to provide the best products combined with the most efficient service at competitive prices. I've found their people live up to this, so don't buy anything without talking to them. You should make their batteries and accessories your choice to power your vehicles and boats. This is Dave Graville, and I choose Battery Systems to keep me running on shore and on the water. To find a Battery Systems product expert in a location near you, log on to BatterySystems.net. Your town Ford is kicking off the season with the best deals of the year. It's the Built Ford Tough Truck Event. Great power and amazing fuel economy means no compromises. And that's what you get in a truck built Ford Tough. Like the Ford F-150 with a powerful and efficient EcoBoost engine. The power you want and the economy you need. Or Ford Super Duty with its amazing 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel. If you're looking for power, payload, towing, economy, your town Ford's got the truck for you. Head to your town Ford in East Wenatchee. see you my friend. We're at the Washington State Sportsman Show put on by the O'Loughlin's and we're at the warm water demonstration tank this morning and I'm going to try to pass on to you and your viewers some of the jig fishing techniques that I've used over the last 30 years both in, both in guiding and in tournament fishing that have proven to work out very well for me. This is a foxy jig it's like any lead-headed jig, except that it's got the eye toward the front. So what, not only can you vertical jig this, but you can do the hopping technique. You can actually put this out behind the boat when you're drifting and hop it along. And it'll just hop along the bottom like some sort of a critter trying to get away. Fish just love that. Or you can cast it up into the shallows and work it down into the deep water. And you'd be surprised how shallow up you'll find these walleyes, sometimes in two feet of water. Now we're going to demonstrate this rock hopper jig by Blakemore. Again, here we have a, a Berkeley worm on there, which works fine, but I like to use night crawlers, so I would probably be fishing a night crawler. The difference in this jig is, one, it's got a horse head on it, so when it kicks a rock, it kind of bounces off to the side. It's also got that little flutter of tractor blade. So let me put this in the water and give you a little show as to how this works. This works. Both as a hopper, you can actually troll this jig, and it works great vertical jigging. Now, Dave, this is uh, this technique's called blade baiting. It's been around a long time. There are a lot of different blade baits out there. There's cicadas. There's slowdowns. This is a head and sonar. Again, this is the lure I was talking about that's won more money in the Northwest than any other technique combined. A couple of the biggest mistakes people make using this lure is they want to work it too fast. You want to work this real slow, real easy. You don't have to move it much. People make a bad mistake of trying to move it two or three feet off the bottom, and that basically you're just taking that away from the fish. You want to remember that the comfort zone for fish is in 8 to 18 inches of water because there's less current on the bottom than there is in the upper strata. So that's where the fish are going to hang out. So let me demonstrate how this little bugger works and uh, we'll go from there.
thank you very much, Ed, for taking the time now. Since Ed has a pretty active schedule of doing seminars throughout the week and weekend at the Washington Sportsman Show. And he's been doing these for years, and I sure appreciate getting our own little private presentation. Well, thanks for having us, Dave. Thanks for coming over and visiting with us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the sports show while you're here. There's quite a lot to see and take oh, in while you're here. You it's know? amazing. I was, I haven't been for many years, and I realized what I've been missing. There is more things to see here and do than you can do in a single day. Well, and the thing about it, too, is every year there's new and different stuff, and and this is probably one of the best places to come and check out new equipment, everything from expensive boats right down to a fishing reel. It's all here. Exactly. And, and the, 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 the pros are here to talk to you about it, and they will take their time to explain the difference between fishing reels or any other product that we have here. You know, one of the most interesting things that's going on now is the, all the innovations in the electronics. I, I can't even keep up with it. It's, it's just phenomenal what they're coming out with now. You know, it's amazing. So I'm waiting for them to come out with one that I can turn on before I leave the house and it tells me where the fish are. They haven't, well, they, with, they haven't come up with that one yet, but they're working on it, I'm sure. Just coupled with your GPS so the truck knows whether to go north or south. That's right. <laughs> now, Ed, also, if someone wanted to get a hold of you, talk a little bit more about fishing or even arrange a trip, how would they go about doing that? They would just call me at home in the Dalles, okay. and my telephone number is 541-298-3753. Or if you contact Dave here, he'll hook you up with it. I'd be happy to. Thanks again, Ed. This was a terrific opportunity, and I appreciate your help. Well, here we are again at the Washington Sportsman Show, and another special treat is I have Bob Atkinson, who is a guide here on, uh, actually, I think you live in Oregon? No, no, I, you live no in, I live in Washington. Live in Washington, but he's fishing on the border of Washington and Oregon quite a bit. Right. On the Columbia River in the Gorge. Correct. Yep. Uh, down below McNary Dam, down to John Day, I fish the Snake River. I do a couple lakes, but uh, my favorite is the Columbia River. Oh my oh, wow. goodness, Bob and I got to talk a little bit at the Pasco Show about what a terrific fishery there is in the Columbia River in the Gorge. It's one of his favorites. And I've been fortunate enough to see Bob here in Puyallup, and he does seminars here at the Puyallup Show too. So he's going to share with us some of his tackle and techniques that he uses for bass fishing right again here in the big freshwater tank right behind us. So we're gonna take a quick break and Bob's gonna show us some rods and reels and some of the lures he uses for catching bass here in Washington and on the Columbia River. No matter where anglers are heading, whether it's Banks Lake, Lake Roosevelt, or Rufus Woods Reservoir, they all make the same stop. That's at Big Wally's in Cooley City. Here they find everything they need for a successful day on the water. Fuel, ice, a tackle shop, and people who know what they're selling behind the counter. State and tribal licenses, even a hot breakfast or lunch. When you're on the go, don't forget to stop at Big Wally's and visit their website at BigWallysFishing.com. Hooked on toys! Anglers are shifting gears and focusing on our popular winter fisheries with Rufus Woods Reservoir at the top of the list. Whether you're after big triploid rainbow from a boat or to shore, Hooked on Toys in Wenatchee has everything you need to do battle with these prized trout. From power bait to trolling lures, Hooked on Toys has the biggest selection you'll find anywhere. Stock up for winter fishing fun at Hooked on Toys in Wenatchee, located at 1444 North Wenatchee Avenue or online at HookedOnToys.com. Hooked on Toys! Evan Root E-Tech. It's a dream come true. 
For E-Tech engine sales and service and repair of all boats and motors, call Lyle's Boats and Motors in Kashmir, 663-5191. Okay, this morning I want to talk about some of the lures that I use uh, in my guide business on the Columbia River. Uh, one of my favorite lures of all time is a, my only claim to fame. It's a lure that's named after me, and it's called Old Ugly by Big Bite Bait Company out of Alabama. And it's just a three and a half inch uh, tube with a lead head jig in it. And uh, I cast it generally on a seven foot lamb glass rod on about 10 pound test McCoy Mean Green line. And uh, just throw it out there, what I'm looking for is uh, rocky flats or rocky points that will break the current and then uh, just slowly drag it along and uh, just hang on. And when you feel just a little slight pop, then you set the hook really, really hard. And uh, this lure, I've caught fish on this lure small mouth, large mouth, all the way from uh, New Mexico to Oregon, California, Nevada, all over the place. So it works great. And that's old ugly. Okay. <laughs> One of the other lures that uh, I use a lot during the year is a Hildebrandt spinnerbait. Uh, they work fantastic. And uh, one of the tricks I have learned is I throw this on, again, on a seven foot three power lamb glass fishing rod on 12 pound test line. And uh, when it's a real cloudy day out, I will generally throw uh, one with gold blades on it. And then if it's a real bright sunny day out, then I'll throw one with silver blades on it because that seems to attract the fish more. And just throw these out and just, uh, Speed them up, slow them down. In other words, an erratic retrieve is going to catch more fish than just a straight retrieve. But spinner baits work great. Uh, catch a lot of fish on those. Okay. Another one that uh, I use a lot during the springtime is a uh, Carolina rig uh, lizard by Big Bite Bait Company, and it's just watermelon green flake. Uh, excuse me, a watermelon red flake, and then I'll take a zoom marking pen and dye about the last half inch of the tail, and that makes a lot of difference. And you just throw this out on like old road beds or rocky flats, and just drag it along real slow, and uh, that, that can produce a lot of fish. And one of the tricks that I use with the Carolina rig is the traditional Carolina rig is a snap swivel but this is using what they call a McCoy McStopper. And it, all it is is a plastic bead that you just squeeze it and you can adjust the length of that leader just like that. And uh, if you're fishing real murky water, then I'll shorten the leader up. If I'm fishing real clear water, then I'll lengthen it out to like uh, two to four feet. And it works great, super fast and keep you, your lure in the water and uh, that's where you're going to catch the fish. Okay. Another lure that uh, I like real well is a jerk bait. Uh, and these uh, can produce a tremendous amount of fish. Uh, I'll throw these out again uh, around rocky flats, points, and uh, weed lines. Um, and then just, you know, this is electrocraft and it has neutral buoyancy and you crank it down a couple of turns and dive down about two feet, then you stop and it just sets there. And then you just give it a little teeny twitch, you don't want to overwork it too much, you give it a little teeny twitch and it makes it look like it's a live uh, minnow. And these work really, really good, uh, they're expensive, but hey, when you're out there having a good time and uh, catching fish, uh, who cares, okay? <laughs> okay, the last one I'm gonna show you uh, is a drop shot that uh, I use a lot when I have either a high pressured area or a cold front, and then I'll use this drop shot method, and I use a, a, what's called a limits, which is made by bass kicking baits out of Kennewick, Washington. And it's just kind of a, oh, kind of a light pumpkin with gold flake. 
and you throw this out, and one of the tricks with drop shotting is when you pass it out, you give it a little teeny bit of slack in the line, and then just constantly shake it, and it makes that worm or limit look like it's alive. And uh, these can produce good fish when, like I say, when you have high pressured areas or a cold front moves through. Okay. And I'm throwing this one on a six foot six uh, lamb glass spinning rod in a three power and super, super sensitive. Okay, now we'll go up on a tank and uh, we'll see if these things do work. When you're fishing in Banks Lake, Lake Roosevelt, even Rufus Woods, the place to stay is at Cooley Playland in Electric City. They have camping and RV hookups right on the water. There's a launch with fuel and one of the best tackle shops in the area. You can get your state and tribal fishing licenses right there. Cooley Playland has been the friendly place to stay for fishermen for decades, and if you haven't camped there yet, you'll learn why. Call for reservations at 509-633-2657. Be sure to visit their website at cooleyplayland.com. Boating is something the whole family can enjoy, and it's surprising how affordable a new boat can be from Bob File Boats and Motors. Stop in today and take a look at the largest selection of boats in North Central Washington, including top names, Bayliner and Tahoe. Bob File Boats and Motors can help you find that boat that fits your needs. And whether it's for fishing or just a ride on the water, you can be sure your new boat will provide hours of fun for years to come. Visit the boating experts today. Bob File Boats and Motors on the Sunset Highway in East Wenatchee, the place to buy a boat. Hi! You are not gonna believe this. I bought Pepsi Next. What's Pepsi Next? It's the new cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste. 60% less sugar? Mmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But this is the most impressive mm. thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. Let me get the camera. <laughs> I've never had anything like it. <laughs> my parents are gonna fly. Yeah, they're gonna be so proud. Introducing Pepsi Next. Drink it to believe it. Are you getting this, honey? It's going viral. Well, here's that tank full of big largemouth, and they haven't seen a lure today, so Bob's going to start off with Old Ugly, that green tube. See how he works that. Looking at that. Little guy coming in. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at him hold on to that. He's too big to get it all in his mouth. <laughs> that was great. Bob is going to try the spinner bait. Oh, look at the action on that. See how that dances through the water. Okay, now Bob is going to cast that Carolina rigged lizard. See how the fish respond to that. That's just crawling along the bottom. <laughs> Ooh, he's looking at it, he's looking at it. Look at that big fish. That kind of got his attention. Okay, now next up, Bob is going to cast that jerk bait. See how that suspends. Oh, he 
wants it. Okay, the last rig Bob's going to show us is the drop shot setup. Light jigging action. <laughs> Just like that. That fish inhaled it. <laughs> Barbless hooks though. Boy, he just doesn't want to let that one go. <laughs> well, I'd say the winner is the drop, drop shot rig in this tank today. Well, Bob, thank you very much for taking the time to share some of the tackle and techniques that you use so successfully for both largemouth and smallmouth bass here in our region. Now, Bob, if someone wanted to get a hold of you and maybe spend a day on the water and experience some of that tremendous smallmouth fishing down around the John Day area, how would they do that? Well, there's a couple of ways. They can, uh, they can call me, uh, but the best way is go on my website, it's atkinsonbass.com. And uh, then they can see all the comments and the pictures and my rate, my phone number, and all that stuff. So it's atkinsonbass.com. Great. That's a real easy way to find Bob, and I would encourage you to do it. I hope we can find some time to get out on the water and do some live action footage of Bob Atkinson catching smallmouth on the Columbia River. <laughs>